My role here today is simply twofold. First, to welcome everybody to what we believe is a, a very important announcement of uh, significance far beyond our campus. And secondly, just to say on behalf of the entire Purdue family how incredibly proud we are, not for the first time, but uh, uh, how very proud we are today of a team of our eminent scientists led by uh, two gentlemen you're about to hear from who have uh, helped the world take a very, very important step forward uh, with regard to the threat we've all been reading and hearing and worrying a lot about. So uh, again, this, this is the latest in a long line of similar achievements for Dr. Rossman, Dr. Kuhn, and others who work with them, but uh, maybe as significant as any of those. We just, I just came over today, Michael and Richard, to say thank you and to say that yet again you have demonstrated this, the vital importance of basic research and investments in it protection of the integrity of research uh, to us all. Thank you, uh, Purdue is very, very proud of you. Uh, some of you may be aware of the news, the news itself, which we'll hear more about, is that a uh, team led by Purdue professors Michael Rossman and Richard Kuhn uh, have determined the structure of the Zika virus, which is a critical advance in the development of vaccines, treatments, and diagnostics. We'll hear much more about this for the rest of the uh, program here. Uh, I think almost, there's, there's probably no one in this audience who's not familiar with uh, what the Zika virus is. It's been all over the news, um, for, of course for unfortunate reasons. Someone said happy Zika day to me today. I think it's happy end Zika day. So uh, as you know, the World Health Organization has labeled this a public health emergency of international concern. Uh, I think you cannot turn on any news uh, channel without hearing about the unfortunate suffering of um, uh, so many people around, you know, 33 countries, I believe, at this point have uh, seen uh, effects of the Zika virus. Uh, many times the, uh, uh, the, the symptoms are quite mild, just flu-like symptoms, but it can have devastating effects in some people. Uh, you've heard of microcephaly, where brain development is affected in, in, in babies, in, in children, in, babies that are born, uh, to, to mothers that are, who are affected during pregnancy. Uh, it's also been associated with the autoimmune disease called uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome, which leads to temporary paralysis and such. So this is uh, a very serious uh, disease that's, uh, that's ravaging many countries. Uh, so the work of our colleagues here uh, illustrates what, what can be accomplished by talented researchers, and they'll talk about all the folks that have been involved with this work, that have access to advanced equipment and resources uh, so that they can take immediate action when threats like this arise. I think this is one of, it's a, it's a very quick response to, uh, to a virus like the Zika that's, uh, that's arisen. So President Daniels and I are here to show our support uh, for the great work being done by, in our College of Science and certainly across all the colleges at Purdue that are involved with the life sciences work. Provost Dada couldn't be here because he's on international travel, but he sends his greetings. And this has been a uh, very real and close partnership between the provost's office, our office, the colleges, the deans, the, the faculty, and so on. And I would emphasize that what you're hearing about today celebrates what can be done when folks collaborate across disciplines and boundaries that uh, too often sort of divide academic work. Um, so Professor Rossman and Kuhn were the first to map the structure of any virus of this family. They determined the structure of the dengue virus first, uh, and then they went on to uh, look at the West Nile virus, and now they've determined that the first to reveal the uh, Zika virus structure. Uh, because of their work, we believe Purdue has provided a critical contribution to the effort to prevent and treat Zika uh, in, in, in all these countries where it's, uh, where it's reared its ugly head. So um, I, I wanted to remind uh, you that we made a recent announcement about a major investment in the life sciences, a $250 million investment in life sciences, which, uh, which is targeted at leading faculty hires 
at a large number of faculty positions across six colleges and, and 20 or so departments. Um, it also provides funding for advanced new equipment and resources and facilities that can facilitate work of the kind you're seeing. I don't know that we can have a press conference like this every week, but we'd be okay if that happened. Um, the, uh, this, this work, which was just published in Science, presents the uh, first example of such a success from one of our two pillars of excellence. This one's on inflammation, immunology, and infectious disease, our other pillar is in neurosciences. Richard Kuhn is the director of this uh, pillar of infectious disease. Um, and so uh, with that, I would like to introduce our scientists here that are the center of attention. Um, I, I'll just say that the accomplishment you're going to hear about today is the first in a long line of tremendous achievements, not only by these two, but by uh, our structural biology group uh, and, and this building as a celebration of that group as well. <coughs> professor Rossman is the Hanley Distinguished Professor of Biological Sciences and has been with us at Purdue since 1964. Uh, he's a member of the National Academy of Science, the British Royal Society, and has served on the National Science Board, which oversees the National Science Foundation. There are many more things about his bio that I'm sure you can read in, his, uh, in the written materials provided to you. Professor Kuhn is the head of our biological sciences department. As I said, he is the director of the uh, pillar of excellence in, uh, in immunology and infectious disease. And he's also, until recently, directed our Bindley Bioscience Center. Um, he's a fellow of the American Academy of Microbiology and of AAAS, the American Association for Advancement of Science. Kind of a marriage between different different parts of the university and if you, if you think about the strengths of Purdue University and we marry those strengths together then I think we can do lots of really good things. First I would like to, to thank my colleague Michael Rossman. Michael has told you that I've been here for a few years and uh, during all of those years Michael and I have collaborated and we've done some, some really exciting science and science that's I think made an impact uh, around the world. And um, I think this continues in that vein. And what I'd like to do is just introduce to you the members of the team uh, that did the work, because Michael and I don't do any of this work, to be honest with you. <laughs> we're, really good, we're really good at issuing orders, and we're pretty good when people show us figures, and well, oh no, I don't like that. So, so we're really good at doing this. So I'd just like to introduce you to the members of the team and if they could just come up and, and be acknowledged. Uh, Devika Sarowi is a, a member of my lab. Uh, Lei Sun is a postdoc in Michael's lab. Uh, Tomas Klose is a, a postdoc in Michael's lab. And Shang Wo. I think the first question that you should ask is, um, what is that? What is the structure? So using the electron microscope, as, as Michael said, we kind of, um, didn't require the traditional x-ray crystallography to go down to high resolution. So we have the structure of the virus and we have the structure of the component pieces of the virus. The virus is made up of repeating units and we have the, the structure of those repeating units completely from cryo-electron microscopy, which unlike the other structures that we've done over the years, this is the first time that we've gone immediately right down to the atomic level to understand the structure. And so that structure really gives us a blueprint for understanding the basic biology of the virus. It creates a blueprint for many other people, as well as what we might be doing, to develop new diagnostics, to develop new therapeutics against the virus, and probably also to design vaccines against the virus. What we see is a virus that looks very similar to other viruses that we've worked on. We've worked extensively with West Nile and dengue virus, and we've done lots of studies looking at how these viruses put themselves together and how do antibodies actually come in and attempt to stop the virus in its tracks. And those have been very informative studies. They inform us as how the virus works, they inform us of how the human body tries to prevent virus infection from spreading. Um, and they also inform vaccine manufacturers as to what are the good spots to pursue if you're going to make an effective vaccine. 
And so looking at Zika virus compared with dengue and West Nile, we see many similarities in the way the virus is put together. But we also see some, some differences. And I think, uh, as, as Dr. Garamella was pointing out, I think you all have heard in the newspapers and on TV and on the web uh, that, that Zika is a very interesting virus in the types of diseases that it causes. And many of these diseases, the ones that are in the paper, the ones that really frighten us the most, um, this, these, these, uh, these diseases are different than many of the ones that we have been studying, like dengue and West Nile. And so one must ask the question, what makes Zika unique? And the first step in, in a virus life cycle is actually getting into a cell and getting into a target cell and getting into a cell that might create a, a phenotype, a, a difference, a disease. And so looking at the structure, we can begin, together with colleagues and together with more experiments, to begin to identify those regions on the virus that are responsible for the diseases that we're seeing right now. And so those are some of the, the predictions that we have made in the paper. They are predictions. And the paper is, as I said from the outset, it's basic biology. And what it provides is a roadmap for us and for others now to do very hypothesis-driven experiments to evaluate these features on the virus and how they cause disease. They will also allow us to think about developing new therapeutics, antivirals, if you will, uh, and also to work with man uh, vaccine manufacturers to develop vaccines that are going to be very effective and that are not going to have other unwanted effects. So that's, that's the bottom line on the paper today. Uh, we're very excited because this is a start for us to really do some much more detailed investigation into Zika virus. And, and